Good afternoon, I'm Brian Loney, and welcome to Fur of Fins and Feathers. This is our 109th episode, and our guest today is Brielle Lilligarten, of a Rhode Island-based author. Welcome. I am very honored to have you. Thank you We for finally me. get to meet and to discuss your books. Tell us about how did you start? So I've always been a lover of reading. Um, I was an English teacher for about 12 years, and reading has just been something that's very important to me. And then when I had my own children, I wanted to instill that same love of reading and that same passion for reading in, in them. So we started reading together every day from the time that they were born. And you know, I was kind of immersed in this world of children's books and reading all these different books um, related, you know, that were interesting to toddlers and babies. So I decided that I wanted to try to recreate one of my own and, you know, make a book that children would love and share my passion and my love for reading with others. And you have produced two books and uh, they are both fish related. Yes. How did you <laughs> choose that subject? Um, I've always been a lover of the ocean and anything beach related. I I love going to the beach in the summer. I've kind of always been fascinated with fish and the sea creatures that live in the ocean. Um, and I just, I thought it would be a cute way to bring some characters to life for young children. And I thought it would be something that young children would Especially enjoy. Especially when reading is so very important. So important. So tell us about your book here. We'll so, start with Fishy Fishy. Yes, yeah, so this is my first book. Um, it was published in 2021, and I wanted to come up with a board book. So I wanted something that was suitable for babies, you know, really so that they could get their hands on it. And, you know, when they're little, they're always into ripping and kind of tearing things apart. So I figured I would go the board book route so that they could handle it themselves, they could turn the pages themselves, and really kind of already start that love of reading and looking at books, looking at the pictures. And it's just a, it's a very short, sweet, rhyming book. It has very simple sentences. Um, it's repetitive, which I thought was important for young children. I felt like it kind of really would like hook them in and captivate them and keep them interested in the story. And it just tells the adventures of Fishy Fishy throughout his day. It's very beautifully illustrated. How did you pick such a good illustrator? So it, he did a fantastic job. Um, I cannot say enough wonderful things about him. Uh, I found Nidholm through my first publisher. So I was given the opportunity to look through a database of publishers and I could pick, I'm sorry, of illustrators, I could pick ones that I felt most closely mirrored. Is he Rhode Island based? He is not, no. He is in, I'm not sure. I forget where is he. Somewhere he's floating from. around yes. America. <laughs> yes, <laughs> um, he is not Rhode Island based though. Um, but he did some samples for, after I picked a few illustrators out of the database, he had drawn up a few samples for me and he just, he captivated exactly what I was looking for. It was just absolutely perfect and so I, I knew right away. So it was a magical combination. Yes, I knew right away. Talk about Fishy Fishy. Could you share it with us? Sure. So again, I said, you know, Fishy Fishy, it's a fun little rhyming book for babies and toddlers. So what age is what age group? Uh, this is perfect, I would say, for children, you know, from birth up until about age two. Okay. Although I, I do find um, I have two daughters of my own. They're six and four. Um, my six-year-old will pick it up and she will practice reading it. Um, so again, with the repetitiveness and with the rhyming. Uh, it's been a good book for her to learn how to read. Also a very good book for a non-English-speaking non, uh, English speaking student. Yes, yes. I've actually had quite a few contacts um, 
from teachers that are ESL and that are also as an ESL teacher. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that would yes, very much so. And also a speech pathologist. Yes. It's helped a lot of children in speech therapy with their with their words and their So share a couple of pages with us. All right. So fishy fishy in the sea. The colors are amazing. That they are. I mean, he di he just did such a wonderful job and like even capturing their faces and Fishy, fishy. colors fishies. are beautiful. Fishy, fishy, swim to me. Fishy, fishy, find some food. Fishy, fishy, happy mood. Fishy, fishy, all day long. Fishy, fishy, sing a song. Fishy, fishy, what a busy day. Fishy, fishy, rest and lay. Fishy, fishy, blue, green, red. Fishy, fishy, time for bed. Very simple, but very eloquent. Thank you. And you've done very well. Yes, it, it's... I'm looking at this and I'm also <laughs> saying she is inspiring other people to become illustrators and authors. I hope so. I hope so. That's my goal is really just to spread the love of reading. You know, I found, find nowadays so many of us are engrossed in our phones or technology, but there's nothing like picking up a good book and just getting engrossed in it and you know, being able to share and pass that love of reading down to your children. Which you have really beautifully accomplished. Yes, I hope so. <laughs> Tell us about the second book. All right, so when I was coming up with my idea for the second book, I was trying to decide if I was going to keep with the fishy fishy theme or if I was going to branch out. I decided to go with I guess what would be considered a sequel. And my original thought was I had designed this book specifically for those really early readers, you know, that zero to two years of eight range. And then I thought, well, you know what? My readers, if they loved this one this much, as they continue to grow and they get ready to go to school, you know, hopefully they'll want to continue following Fishy Fishy on his journey. Um, and as many of my readers are getting ready to go to school, Fishy Fishy is also getting ready to go to school. So it's something that they can relate to. And share this one with us. Okay. Same uh, illustrator? Yes. So I made that an absolute priority when I was designing this book. I ended up switching publishers. And for this one, I decided to use a local publisher. I used Stillwater Books. And they are a friend of mine. Yes, and uh, Steve there is absolutely wonderful. He walked me through every step of the process. It was a very personal um, collaboration, and it, I felt like I had a hand in absolutely everything that was happening. Um, he just, you know, he he really took this project and made sure that. It, it came out perfect. The and thing I like about Steve is they are so hands-on. Yes, very hands-on. And, you know, he helped me with every bit of the process. Uh, like I said, I had made it a priority to go with my original illustrator just because I felt like he captured my characters perfectly and I wanted to keep it similar to the original Fishy Fishy. So I wanted to keep that, you know, continuity. And this is a recently published book. This book was recently published. It came out this year, 2023. It was released the end of March. So it's been out for a couple months. And tell us about Fishy Fishy. All right. So Fishy Fishy goes to school. He is goes getting... Goes to school. I yes. can't leave that out. <laughs> He's getting ready to head out on his first day of school. So it's a good book just for, you know, those children, maybe like in the three to five year range that are getting ready maybe to go to preschool for the first time or for kindergarten for the first time just to kind of ease those nerves and you know help them to realize that it is a fun exciting new thing
It's a new adventure. So, yes, it sure is. <laughs> All right. So, one warm, sunny day, Fishy Fishy awoke with the sun. He was ready for his first day of school, full of fun. He brushed his teeth and fluffed his scales. Then off he went to eat breakfast with the whales. With a flick of his fin and a splash through the bubbles, he gathered his backpack and forgot all his troubles. Quickly he swam to the bus stop to see all of his friends as they shouted with glee. One by one they all boarded the bus when one of the fish started a fuss. Don't worry, we'll all get to school on time. There's no need to yell or scream or whine. The bus started moving slowly through the tide. In the distance, they saw their teacher beaming with pride. Fishy Fishy swam off the bus with a jump, and all of the fish followed without a bump. They smiled and laughed and floated around with delight. The teacher said, Fishy Fishy, my, you look bright. They entered the schoolhouse ready to learn. For more information, they all did yearn. Fishy Fishy and friends learned and played all day. Before they knew it, it was time to say, Goodbye, Mrs. Coral. See you tomorrow. We're sad the day is over, they said with such sorrow. As they boarded the bus with their backpacks and coats, they swam really fast to avoid all the boats. Fishy Fishy arrived at home, tired from school. He smiled at his family and said, my day was really cool. I can't wait to do it again tomorrow. The end. How long did it take you to write this book? Um, You're inspiring <laughs> me. This, this one, it was a while. Um, I, I, again, I had wanted to keep the continuity of the rhyming, but I knew I wanted to make the sentences a little bit more complex just for that next age bracket. Um, so this one, there was a lot of playing around with words and sentence structure, and so it, it definitely took me a few months. Which is the third book. <laughs> are you thinking about, are you, are you, excuse me, are you gonna keep with a nautical theme? Um, that I'm not sure. So I've been I've been toying around with what the third book is going to be. You just can't stop. Uh, no, <laughs> I'm on a roll now, so I have to just keep going. I've, you know, I've asked family and friends, should I do another fishy fishy? Should I change it up? And I've gotten a mixed review. Everyone keeps saying, oh, do both. Do another fishy fishy. Do something else. So I, I'm really. I'm not sure where I'm headed next, but there will be a third book. I'm just not, just not sure which direction I'm heading in yet. Fabulous. The colors are gorgeous. They are. They're, they are absolutely beautiful on the page. They the really illustrator are. is a really remarkable person. Yes, he, he's extremely talented. And talk about the writing process. You were an English teacher. Yes, so I'm, I was in the classroom for about 12 years as an English teacher and... You went to Salve Regina. I did, yes. Majored I did. in? I majored in uh, criminal justice. D different. <laughs> and then um, after I, I had done an internship my last semester of my senior year and I just, I was like, this is not for me. Now what do I do? So I had ended up graduating with the degree, and then I ended up uh, going to Rhode Island College for a Master's of Art in Teaching, and I focused on elementary education and middle school education, um, focused on English. So I had completely changed paths, <laughs> um, and I ended up finding myself teaching. I spent a little bit of time in elementary, and then I spent the majority of time in middle school. And, you know, I, much of my day was teaching my students how to write. And it, it's, 
a difficult process, especially when you're trying to teach others how to do it and really, you know, formulate your ideas and come up with, you know, that cohesive story that you're looking for. And I tried to take what I taught my students and apply it to my own writing process and, you know, start with the brainstorming, start with you know, writing all of your ideas down on paper, just getting anything out there that's coming to mind, and then just edit and proofread, edit and proofread, edit and proofread. I mean, I cannot tell you how many drafts I had of both books before it was perfect and how I wanted it. And produced a finished product. Yes. <laughs> Do you like animals? Do you have any animals? I do. So <laughs> I do have fish. <laughs> you do Surpri have fish. Surprise, right? <laughs> um, I do like animals. Um, dogs and cats don't love me. I am allergic, so they do have to be hypoallergenic. Uh, so we do have fish. <laughs> um, we have, we had two, and then my daughter's kindergarten classroom had fish. And the teacher at the end of the year had asked if anybody wanted to take home the fish. And my daughter had been telling me about these fish all year. She's like, we have fish in school too. We have to feed them, take care of them. So when she found out that they could take the fish home, she was like, can I please take some home? So we now have two fish added to our tank uh, from the kindergarten classroom. Fish are a fascinating. I've had several fish keepers on the show. Oh, okay. And they have really had some wonderful stories. And they have a, the Tropical Fish Club of uh, Southern New England has grown. They have a great group of people. Oh, wow. So that's, uh, and they have expanded and they, they've been on my show three or four times. Oh, wow. And they've always come with very fascinating topics. <laughs> Have you ever thought about doing a dog book or a cat book? I have. I mean, I know, you know, dogs and cats, people love them. And what's not to love about them? They're so cute and cuddly. So I, I have thought about going that route. You're inspiring me. <laughs> That's my goal. <laughs> and you would like to continue. You're going to continue. Yes, I am going to continue. Um, I mean, for now, you know, I'm self-published. I... I would love to one day, you know, get picked up by a publisher and be traditionally well, published. Steve has a good track record. Yes, yes. Stillwater has done some fabulous books lately. Yes, and he's a great resource. Um, I really can go to him with any question that I have, and he answers it. If he doesn't know the answer, he finds out for me, so... Very beautiful, beautiful colors. They are very, very vibrant. Yes. I bet you have received numerous compliments. Yes. I, I And I have to say, everybody, they always comment on the illustrations um, and just the way they that are capturing. It, it complements the story. And I mean, even when I'm doing, you know, shows or vendor events, the little kids, they always run up to the book and they're like, oh, look at this one, you know, and I think, you know, just the fish on the front kind of captures them. It's bright, it's colorful. He looks happy and welcoming. And it, it, it achieved my goal of wanting children to pick up the book and want to read it. Reading is so important. I, I keep emphasizing that. It is. It is. And I, I mean, like I said, since my children were born, I have read to them every single day. And it's just part of our routine. I bet you go to the library a lot. Yes, we do. We visit the local library very often. Um, when they were younger, you know, before they were in school, I would take them to the story time all the time. We would check out books and just really keep reiterating reading is important. You know, it's it's something fun. You can go on, you know, new adventures through books and it, it's just something that is 
important and should be part of your daily life. And now that my older daughter is starting to read, it's so amazing watching her pick up a book and be able to read the words, you know, and, and get excited and be like, wow, I just read that story, uh, that sentence or that story. And, you know, she feels accomplished and she's like, I can do this. Like, let me pick up another one. And, you know, it's kind of, it, it's amazing just to see that love that's been instilled in her. And it, you, by, as a writer, you are inspiring others to do likewise. I hope so. I hope so. Where is your book? Where are your books available? Um, they're available through my website. So, Which is uh, com. That's B R I L I L Y B O O K S dot com. And if they come directly from my website, they also come signed. So there's a spot on the website for you to put in how you would like it to be made out, and then I will sign them. And I also include, you know, some little goodies and freebies with it. Uh, it's also available on Amazon that the copy will not come signed. It's coming directly from the Amazon warehouse, and it's also available at Stillwater, Stillwater Books. And you are available for book signings and speaking engagements yes i love doing book signings i love doing you know different engagements in the community i love being able to meet fans of my book or just fans of reading in general um i've met so many families so many children and it's just been a great way to get out into it's the empowering, community isn't it? it is it is and you know it's a great way to get out into the community and you know, it makes me feel like I'm sharing these good books with kids and, you know, it's exposing them to more literature that maybe they wouldn't have been exposed to if they hadn't attended. Another being an ESL teacher, have you thought about translating them into foreign languages? I have thought about that, yes, I have. There is such a need for Spanish-speaking students and Portuguese speaking student and other languages. Yes, I, I have thought about thought about that. And that may be in the works. Yes. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> Please, because you you have such a wonderful gift to share with people. Thank you. And you love uh, fish. Yes. Do you have any kind of, of fish? Do you breed fish? Or do did I, you, oh, no. you, you, you no. purchase them at a pet <laughs> yes. store? Yes. <laughs> Any kind of, do you have a special fish though? A certain breed or anything? No, they're just. Fish. It, yeah, they're just fish. My, you know, my daughters wanted to go to the pet store and pick them out. So we were like, sure, pick out whatever you want. <laughs> How many do you have? Uh, there's four right now. And they're all so. very special. Yes. And I bet they're colorful. Are they like this? Are they colorful fish? <laughs> they are colorful fish. Not as colorful as this, but yes, they are colorful. Very good. I would like to see you do a dog book or a cat book. All right. Or there, uh, when Philomena came on, she talked about uh, her uh, animals in different countries and things. That was very interesting. Oh, that is. That's definitely something to explore then. There, uh, the possibilities are un they're n never limited. Yes, they're endless, un right? <laughs> endless, unlimited possibilities. Yes. This is a great book. Fishy Fishy is off to school, and he's ready to explore the ocean. We have so many places in Rhode Island that would give you great fodder for other stories. <laughs> yes. <laughs> To find out what he waits, yes. First, the first day of school as a teacher and as going back maybe 65 years, the first day of school was always intimidating. Always, always. And you are combating that by sharing this wonderful, beautiful story. This is great. 
we got to give a plug to, to Steve. Steve has been tremendous in working with you. How did that process go on? He How really, did you find Steve? So I'm part of the Association of Rhode Island Authors. And Talk about that. I've done a few events with them, um, the biggest being the Situate Art Festival. That's where I first fall. met Steve. Yes. Um, and the woman who had the booth next to me, she had just recently published a book. And she had asked That's me. That's where I met Philomena. Okay. <laughs> she had asked me who I had used. And at the time, I only had my first book out. And, you know, I had used another publisher. And I said to her, I'm, I'm looking for different, different options. I would rather use someone local so that I can have more of a hand in the process and what's going on. And she was like, oh, have you heard about Stillwater Books? They're located in Pawtucket. Steve and Dawn are absolutely wonderful. She's like, I think you should really check them out. So after that event, I had started researching and found out that they were a bookstore as well as a publishing company. And I had contacted them. I got to go right down to the bookstore and meet with Steve in person. So that was awesome. I got to bring him my manuscript. We looked it over. He asked me what I was envisioning for the book. And, you know, if I had an illustrator, I told him how I wanted to keep the same illustrator for the, you know, same kinds of illustrations and the continuity between the two books. And he really just said, okay, you know, this is how it's going to work. We'll get the illustrations done. Once illustrations are complete, send what you have, you know, for the layout. We'll make sure that it looks great on the pages. We discussed whether I wanted it to be hardcover or softcover and really just what I wanted it to look like. And he just walked me through every step of the process. And he and has done the same for my brother. Yes. He's marvelous. He is. He is. It's been wonderful. They are telling me that we are almost ready to wrap up. This okay. has been fun. This I has have been. really enjoyed <laughs> me too. meeting you and sharing your beautiful books that I hope are going to become treasures throughout not only Rhode Island, but for all of the area. Yes, I hope so. Thank you for having me. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, and welcome again to episode 109 of Thorfins and Feathers, and we'll see you in a few weeks. Thank you.